Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Factorio with yours truly in Zania. And as you can see, things are going well. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, I found out a bunch of stuff. Notice that I just had a train leave. You've seen that. And then here's another one entering. So I've set up my multi-train setup. And I'm going to show you how I did it. That way you guys can understand something that I found quite difficult to understand at first. But once you've really got a grasping of it, these train signals, then they're pretty easy to understand. But it's just, you know, getting that, you know, getting to understanding that, how they work and whatnot. In fact, I've noticed now that my understanding has improved so much that I realize that I can now change this one around a little bit too. Um, but, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how they work. Because I looked on the wiki, and the wiki explains it in a way that people that played another game that involved trains, which I, it's, I can't remember the name of it, I'm very sorry, but there's another game that really focuses on trains, and it's got all these signals, and it's got blocks and segments, and, uh, you know, block lanes, and, and or block, block traffic, and merging track, all, all kind of weird stuff. I, I can't even remember what all it was on there. There was a bunch. And apparently the devs took some of the insight from that game and included it into this one for the trains. Now the wiki makes some really hard, hang on one second, makes some really hard to understand. If you don't know anything about trains like me, I didn't, I'm sorry, I mean I'm just, I'm not a train guy. I love the games, but I never really got in depth and wanted to learn the ins and outs of why the signals work and how they work and stuff like that. I mean, I've always played games like Railroad Tycoon where you just put down track, put a train on it and said, all right, I want you to transfer this from there and have fun, you know. But in the in-depth part of it, the way these signals work is, number one, in order for a train to acknowledge that that signal is even there, that signal must be on the right side of the track as the train approaches just like the stops. Notice that all my stops up here are on the right hand side and the guys come in and they stop if they're told to stop at that stop. Well the signals are the same except signals are expressive for every train that comes by it. Now there's one part of this or part of this that you've really got to etch into your brain when you're playing with these train signals and it took me a little while to understand this so I'm going to try and simplify as best as I can. Every point between two signals that only contains one section of track is called a block. Now it can, con or I'm not one section, a blank, but a portion of track. Doesn't matter how many V's off it has, but a portion of track is called a block. The part is a segment. A segment is a part that you know that isn't a block, basically. So I mean, here's the easy way to do it. This right here. Segment position front rail. This is segment 1725. A segment is a section in between. Like there's a signal. That segment is 1726. This segment is 1722. If I look at that signal, that signal is going to say start ends entering segment is 1722. Exit should be 17 whatever. So look at the blocks rather. I'm sorry. I've got it all backwards. All right, because see, I just learned it myself, so, but I'm trying to explain it, and, all right, you got block 23 here, block 14 here, so this one should say 23 and 14, incoming is 23, outgoing is 14, yes, okay, so now we've got it wrapped up in my head right again. <laughs> a segment is a section of track, a block is multiple sections of track, there we go. So, the way signals work is that, and I've got this one really poorly put up, which is why it's so difficult to understand, why it's confusing me. I need to fix this part right here, because this is just wrong. Um, I mean, it's okay, but it's unnecessary. This point right here is a starting of a, of, a, of, a, of a block. Notice that this whole train, if you look at the block, block 14, all the way down to this signal will be block 14. Once I surpass that signal, the block changes. This is block 13 and block 13 get off of stuff and walk this is block 13 right here and all of this will be block 13 this whole section in between these signals if that's understandable basically I put a signal here and any track attached to the track touching that signal 
that goes until it hits another signal becomes part of that block. So like for here, this whole section of train touches, or track rather, and then it comes to here and there's another signal that cuts it off. This section of train also touches this section of train, or tra I keep saying train. This section of track touches this section of track, so it stays part of the block until it hits another signal. Now, if I move that signal all the way down to here, then all of this would be, still be part of block 13 instead of this turning into block 21. So here's how you do it. I tend to do it backwards. Like for this whole deal, I put, I said, okay, well, when my train, if my, I've got a train here on this part of the track, I don't want anything coming through here. Or I want things to come through here, but I don't want anything to come into this. So I put a signal there, and then I went back over here. And I put my other signal here. And what that does is that made a block right there. That whole section became one block. Everything else was one other block. And that's all it was. So if you was on the other part of the track, you were okay. You could go. You could drive anywhere you wanted to. But if this light turned red, if there was a train in here, it would make this light turn red so that you could not come into this. And that other train, when he comes through, if that one's sitting there, notice how he stops. And he just waits. All right, that train has now passed this signal, which frees up this block for anybody. Then he can drive in there. I did a whole video explaining this by draw, making another track. And somehow or another, my mic screwed up again, like it did in some of them other videos. And... I, I guess maybe I didn't turn it back on, or it was I thought it was turned on, and it wasn't turned on. That's twice now. So it didn't get any, any voice, any sound. So I'm re-explaining it again in this video. But if you watch this guy, he's going to come up and go straight. That turns red. Nobody can come in this track. And why? That signal and this signal control that. If I only wanted them to stop here, I could move this signal down to here. And what would happen is from here all the way to here would become one block. And then from here on back would become another block, would, would, would retain this, block 23. In fact, another good thing is, is that if I want them to, where are they at? I don't even have them now, do I? I put them all up. Can I make some? No. If I want it, I can come up here and grab some iron plates real quick and make some, though. And I can walk up here because he's got at least 20 seconds. So we're going to grab some iron plates real quick so we can make some signals. All right. And here we'll make five. Just so we can play with them. We've got the other tracks and stuff, right? Do we? Do we? Don't we? No? Yes. Okay. All right. Now watch. He'll come off and take off. He don't care that I'm on the track. But he'll come and take off because that signal turns red or turns green once the track surpasses the other signal. Watch, it's red, and when he gets past that signal, it this one turns back green, opening up his track again. Now, if I wanted to, I could take and put another signal here. Now, by putting another signal here, what that does is that says, all right, well, if there's a train in this track, you can't keep coming. But once the train gets into this track, this one turns red right here. So basically, any train that comes through, watch this guy. See there? There it goes. It turned red. But now the other train is free to come as far as here, but no further, until this train passes this point. Once this train leaves and passes this point, that one will turn green. It'll free up this block right here. And there, now that block's free for entrance. This one turned red because the train went through and he's stuck right there because there's another train. And this one won't, this track won't free up until he gets past that right there. So now that track's free. He's now over on this track right here. So that one turns red. You can't enter that one until he comes down and out and exits this one. If you watch, as soon as he passes there, this one up here will turn green. There it goes. And then he goes and goes all the way back around. As you can see, I've redone my entire track. Basically, you come up, comes around into the copper, or they can subvert the copper and go under it. Now, the copper train, what he does, I've got a copper train. Copper train stops at Danny Beetle, comes down, goes across, stops at Simo Nasoian, Asonian, whatever, Simo, comes around this way, comes down here, 
and loops back, stops at Danny Beetle. That's all the copper train does. Look at them bad guys coming at my turrets. Are they crazy? Are they crazy? And then he stops at Danny Beetle. Now my iron train does a little different. My iron train comes down and for some reason he refuses to use this and I haven't figured out why I know that this is just a little bit shorter but even when this trains like up here when the, my copper trains up here he'll still sit here and wait to go this way instead of just bypassing it and coming around I don't quite understand why I'm hoping that that next signal will help fix that by putting that signal there because it lets him know that there's a block track ahead so go take an alternate route I don't know if that's why or how or what I don't know but my cop or my iron train goes down and he tends to come up this way and then he'll jump off here and stop at uh necromia or whatever or neck Maril or nick Maril. one of these one of these is for the copper tra or the iron train one of them needs to be picked up i just haven't yet and then one of them's for the uh for the uh repair packs train and i built a special train just to do repair packs so he'll come to here and then he'll come down and then come across and come up and then back to Danny. And then that's it. He'll stop at Danny Beetle and then rinse repeat. He'll keep going around, stop at uh, Nick Morrell, come all the way back around, stop at Danny Beetle, back to Nick Morrell, stop at Danny Beetle. Now I've got a new train that I added and we'll come over here and take a ride with it. And this new train is my, my little dude. It's just a little old one train, one cart deal, or one cargo wagon deal. There he is right there, in fact, perfect timing. So we'll hop in him. Now what he does is he starts here, gets some coal, and notice that I put all these smart inserters. I put all these smart inserters, and if you look, if I hit Alt, you can see they're set to only take copper and uh, iron. And the reason that I did that was so that they wouldn't unload this track, this train, which is the... Uh, the repair packs. So this guy comes up here and waits for 10 seconds, lets this guy up take the repair things. Now for, that's it, that's full. So then it comes on and it goes around over to the other. Basically it's going to all of my stations. That's all it does. That's all this train does is loop to all of my stations and re replenish the repair packs. Now if at some time I need to repair walls and stuff like that, I can add walls to this and uh, it'll open up, it'll take walls too and I can put another inserter and another crate here that would t take walls off of it. Oops, we lost some power here. Oh, we'll stop next time. But it just keeps going around and around and around. And that's all this guy does. And with all the new train signals that I've added, blocking off track, notice how they block off all this track whenever there's a train on it and whatnot. And this guy also stops. This is my blockage for this track so that they could at least get here. They stop here if anything's in front of them. And then he can drive forward, and he'll stop right there. And what that is, is that's these arms to replenish the health things into his, if anybody took any out. And then he'll go up to here, and he'll get refitted with coal. He only needed one piece for that whole trip. And then he'll take off and go to the other. And when we go to the other one, I'll get out. That way I can uh, fix them things. But that, in a nutshell, is how signals work. Now, the, the thing with signals is the easy way to understand them is that if every piece of track that touches the track that the signal is on, that until that piece of track touches another signal, it's included in that block. If that's the easy way to understand it. That's the easy way that I'm understanding it in my mind. And that's why I've got, if I hit escape real quick, if I move this, yes, you'll see this signal here. I had to put a signal there in order for it to open up this block of track because this piece of track touches this piece of track. So by ending it here, I end off both of these. So it's like cutting a slice, a line through there, through that whole piece of track. It's like cutting a line through here. And any track, any track that's connected to these two pieces that goes all the way around, which is this one, this one, and this one, have to have another signal, which you can see they do. One has one there, and the other one's at the top. So it makes all of this one block. 
So if anything is in that block, nothing else can enter that block from any possible ex exit that has a signal. Now fortunately all my trains only run one direction, so I only need single signals. If I had trains that would possibly get on this track coming this way, I would need to also put signals on the right hand side for that, that portion of the track, or the portions of the track where the train will be running backwards. Like if the train went this way and then down to here, I would only need a signal on this side right here because there's already one on the right side there. So that one would tie in with this one just fine. This one is for the trains that come down this way anyway, so it blocks it up. But if this train went this way, then I would need another signal up here on the right hand side by that other one to stop to, to lock that train that track while for this train to to block that train from going anywhere that's going that way. If that's understandable. So another thing I wanted to show in this episode was this. Now these are provider chests. I don't know if I've talked about this in the other episode. I think it was in the one that I just got rid of because of the voice problem being messed up. If you've seen this, if, I've, if I did this in a previous episode, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do it again just to make sure that it's in there. Now, if you right-click on one of these, it opens up, and this is with all chests, not just providers, but I haven't shown this yet, so... Or at least I don't think I have. Now, the way this works is you have this, which limits the inventory part. By left-clicking this, you get a, a bar. And what this bar does, it fills up with red. It basically limits the size of that box. So by putting it there, my train can only unload uh, that much of these things into it. You know, to fill up these slots. You can set it to all one to whatever you need. I just figured that's more than enough repair for this facility. So it'll come and it'll unload. When that's full, the other train will come and the inserter, there's no space, so the inserter won't take any more. And that lets you set a steady supply because then my train will keep going around and around and around and around and it won't dump any off here until some are taken and used. So uh, that solves that. Now let's figure out what happened here. Somehow we lost a bunch of track. And I don't know how. I'm guessing some monsters came through this way. Some bad guys. We was out there killing them earlier. I was. There we go. So now we got everything going again. And yeah, it looks like they destroyed that and my uh, and my lines. So we're gonna tie it all back in. We've only got a couple. And it looks like they destroyed a butt ton of these guys because I had these guys all the way down both sides. So they destroyed a bunch of them. It's all right, though. We'll get them back. What we'll do is we'll just make a bunch more and come put them back because we're going to be limited on iron until we do. So we got to be careful. All right, so I'm going to go make a bunch of them. So we need about 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We'll skip that, that stone area. So about 12, 15. And then I need to come out. Yeah, you can see where they're coming through. They're, sometimes they get drawn over and probably a few got past it. So I'm going to build another uh, defense section right here, which I might even have the stuff to do that now. Nah. I've got the them guys. Let's see, we got a, tra a car. Yeah, we do. Don't you just love this? We'll put our five coal in there, jump in, take off to the hizzle. You got to be careful here because you get hit by a train in this car and it'll still blow the car up then kill you. All right, let's get out. You can go fix that if you want to. That's nice of you. All right, what do we need to make them? Um, um, I know it's the iron plates, iron gears, and electronic circuits. Go, 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 go. So let's grab some iron plates, some iron gears, some electronic circuits. And now how many can we we'll, we'll make 20. That's fine. Right, let's grab some more. We'll make a ton. We'll make enough of them to where we can cover a whole bunch of area. Another 15 will do. That's 35. That's a lot. All right. So we'll head back. We still got about 10 minutes. So look how efficient this works, though. This is working so well. It really is working very well, this setup. So if you mirror anything that I've done, 
this would be the thing I'd advise because this works great. Now I'm running very low on copper and I gotta go check that out first. I probably my copper wells have probably run dry because they're getting low. I'm eventually gonna have to tie into this one over here. Yep, look at all of them sitting there not doing a thing. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven that weren't even working. Eleven lazy, lazy, lazy mining drills. Alright, so we'll go one, two, three, four. Five, yeah, six, seven, eight, I'm on, get off there, nine, ten, eleven, and then we got to tie some power lines into them all, so we're going to go ahead and make some real quick, while I'm using these, I'm on, come on, come on. All right, and that ties them all in. Now we'll have a butt ton of copper running up there. More running, well, about the same, really. And then we'll tie a couple into here next. And then uh, we'll be able to get all of this. We got that gap in there. I'll, I'll grab that gap next, too. And then we'll get this. And then we'll, we'll set them all up. We'll just keep expanding them over. That's all you do. Did I lay another? Is that where I drove my car all the way up here? I guess I did. All right, so let's go. Let's go set up our iron again. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Come on, you go ahead and tell me. All right, something's attacking my copper now. Oh, they were attacking up there. Go around. Hop out. We need to get some walls. I really need to fix this so that I can get in. Maybe bring this down some. So that it's a little easier to drive in there. Because I'm driving all the time now. That's something else that I'm not really accustomed to doing. Driving. I didn't use the vehicles too much in the past games because they were kind of inefficient. Once you get uh, your Mark II armor... You see how fast I'm running now? Once you get the Mark II armor, you've got enough room to put two or three of them little exoskin, exoskeleton thingies, the deals that make you move faster. You got enough space in one of them to put a couple of them, and I think that's how I ended up doing mine, was I have a, a fusion reactor, might have possibly had two, but I think just one, and then I had two of the exoskeleton suits to make me run faster, and then like four or five shields, and then uh, like two or three batteries. But here we got everything. We're gonna we're gonna protect this off now though. And another thing we need to do is come over here and put some walls. Or well, we need to make another. We got a, we got some down here actually. We need to just go grab go grab one. No, that one's empty. And what I'll do is to be smart is I'll set it right here and go ahead and set it up. That way, whenever I do, we're not going to need that many. Three will be enough. And then if I lock this off to three, it won't be able to grab any of the uh, these deals. And I can set this up, actually, as one of these guys. And then I can tell it only walls, wherever they are. Probably here. Yeah, now it will only take walls, so I can undo this. You don't need that, but I only want them to have about three stacks of walls here anyway, so that's fine. So now, any whenever I set that train up, if I go back to base and set up an inserter inserting walls into it, then when it gets to here, it'll unload walls until all three of them stacks fill up, and then it'll stop. So, let's see, I'd say right about in here would be good, because that's pretty much split between both. And I know that they were coming in right here or so because I saw it. 
So let's go out and we'll go four, 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 and three. And now we need one of these right here. And now we need one of these right here. And then we just need walls. And we're only going to double up the back. Because if they get to the back of it, it's, you know, they'll probably end up running past it. So, do like that. And the cool thing is also, as I've said many a times about picking stuff up, is that when I clean this place out and there's no more iron here, I can come grab all these walls and all these. Yeah, it's a chore. It's a lot of work to have to do it, but it's worth it. Because I can grab all them chore, all that stuff. I can grab all that stuff and uh, all this and all this and just move it to a new site. And I don't have to make a, a bunch more turrets. All right, so let's do like so. Now, both of them should be able to range anything that gets within that. Okay, that should be good right there. We can take this one off. All right, so now there should be no more of that getting in here and attacking my stuff. Now, why isn't these guys? There is no guys there. Where are they at? They're jammed up down here. I know why, too. I've got walls now in a provider chest. Is it outside the area? Oh, they are. They destroyed one of my things. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. we got to make another uh, train thingy, one of these deals. All right, well, I'll do that in a minute. we got to make another one, though, and put it, like, right here. When they came in and destroyed all this stuff, it was right in here somewhere, and it tied into that. Well, actually, it was over here, I thought. Maybe, maybe I didn't. Maybe I never put one in there. But we need to go do one. Let's go do one right now. We only got about five minutes left in this episode. So we'll go do that, and then we'll tie in the other mining drills, and uh, everything will be good over there. But you'll understand, you understand now at least train signals, and that was what I wanted to get out, or at least I tried to make you understand it. If you don't understand it, if I explained it in a very difficult to understand way, by all means, comment, let me know, and I will try to explain it further. I will go through the detail of building the little track that I built in the last episode that got lost. Basically, in the last episode, I built a double, uh, basically kind of like a figure eight, a square figure eight. And then I set up stops and train signals, and as I sat them up, I explained them and how they worked. And it was really nice. It was really good, but it took me about an hour to set it all up, and then another 30 minutes on screen to, to explain it. And so I've tried to do is condense what I did in that hour into about 15 minutes on this one and then still do more stuff. So we need to make one of these guys. I need some steel and some iron gear wheels. I need to set me up a factory to make me about five of them. That way there's always about five on hand. All right, I need some steel. There's some steel. All right, let's make two. Then we'll have one in our inventory. And let's go back and set it up. We still have a couple minutes. I really try to keep these episodes at 30 minutes. I know that I break that rule every once in a while. Like I've had a few that were 35 and 40 minutes. And those were ones that, to be honest, my timer turned off or I wasn't watching it or I forgot to set it or the video itself just required 40 minutes. Oh, man. I need some coal. <laughs> Dead it. Let's just pick it up. We'll go back and get some coal. It's a good thing we just got out the gate. <laughs> that was five coal burned up right there. I think I got a full load over here in this one. I got one coal in it. Now, what's with me and leaving my cars on empty? It's like my old lady used to do, my ex-wife. I always wanted to leave the car empty. All right, so let's go. Let's put that in there. Now we got a full tank. Yeah, baby. Getting pretty good with this car too. You'd be surprised how quick and 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 whatnot you uh. How quick you pick it up. All right, so let's go over here. Let's get out. 
Let's set up this thingy. All right, and so that should ought to be a good place for it. Actually, let's do it like that. That way it covers all of that other one. There we go. Now if we give it some power, them other guys should come and get these, uh, should be able to come get these supplies when they need them. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to assume that they will because everything's within range. They can go around this way. All right, so let's set up these things real quick, and then we can end the episode. Yep, they're going to have some dadgum much iron coming in that they ain't going to know what to do with it. what I'm talking about. If you're going to swing it, swing it, know what I mean? There we go. Now that's a bunch of iron coming. Now granted, it's a lot coming to one line and not quite half as much going to another line, but guess what? We've still got some more drills, don't we? Yeah, 13 of them. fighting down below us right now. We'll put some more in there. Get some of these guys going like so. Okay, okay, okay. These guys are empty. So we can move them. Is that going to give us 1,800? Yeah, it's better than nothing. How much is that one? 1,900? Okay, it's something. It ain't these big six and seven thousand, but it's close enough. We're about run out of this one. <laughs> Once these guys empty out, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to move up some. In fact, with this backing up the way that it is, I'm either gonna have to use them blue blue tracks in here, or uh, take some of these off and tie them into another track. And what I'll do is I'll run another whole row and then run it down and tie it into this track. Which is something I could do actually right now. Let's see, we could go like this. And then. Oops. Like so. And then use another one. Like so. And that'll help with both lines not being quite so congested. We'll see, though. Yeah, because no, now that's backing this up. So, yeah, I don't think that was a good idea. Don't think that was a good idea at all. It's all right. We'll just let it go. I was looking back at the video. One thing I need to do, though, is that... That's definitely something I need to do. There. There we go. That helps. I don't like it deadening into one side. All right, there we go. That's that, and that's this episode. Sorry, we went a couple minutes over again. In the video I'm talking about is not trying to go over. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you learned something. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions about train signals, if you just couldn't figure it out because I explained it in a stupid way or in a way that you know made it even more difficult than the wiki did, let me know in a comment, and I will do the other video that really details. I'll do a 30-minute video explaining just train signals, and I'll build the track and all that other stuff. But if, if if I explained it well enough that you understand it, please let me know that also too, so that I'm not worried that people are running around, you know not understanding what I'm trying to put out. All right. Other than that, have a great day.